Today in Homemade Science, I want to take another look at my fan card. Now, in the previous video, I had some demonstrations that I think I could have done better. Plus, I got some great suggestions in the comment section of a few things that we can try. So I thought we'd take a closer look. Now, the fan card's a very popular demonstration that's done in the science classroom. In fact, I borrowed this one from our high school physics room. Now, the device demonstrates Newton's third law. When I turn this on, uh, the fan's going to be pushing air in that direction, which in turn is going to give us a reaction of the cart moving in that direction. Now the next part of this demonstration is to add this piece of plastic to the cart, and this plastic is going to act as a sail. If air hits it, well that's going to drive the cart in this direction. And the fan, of course, wants to drive the cart in this direction. So, with the sail in place and the fans turned on, what happens? It stays still. So this cart doesn't move because both those forces are applied to the cart itself. And they're equal, there's no net force to push it in one direction or the other. Now I decided to make my own fan cart, and it looks like this. I shaped it like a boat so I could demonstrate the misapplication of Newton's laws in a children's story, and also in some cartoons. Now since a previous video I have added a stronger motor, and I had quite a few questions about my sail and the way I positioned it. So if I put it in this direction, it's pretty much acting as a solid piece of plastic. Let's see if it makes any difference if I turn it around. Even with the sail on the correct side of the mast, the sheet is simply pulled too tight to make any difference. It's just simply directing the air off to the sides. What is needed is a curved surface that can redirect the air backwards, kind of like the reverse thrust on a jet engine. So my next step was to make a sail out of cardboard which I thought could then deflect some of the air backwards enough so that it would be able to drive the cart forward. And when I turn this on, we see that it worked. So the question I got asked over and over in the comment section was, could I do that with a cloth sail? I thought I'd better give it a try since that's what they showed in the drawings. Well, actually, I'm going to use plastic instead of cloth, since that's easier to use. Now, I think we're ready to give this a try here. it and off it goes. Hey, that works pretty well. I really am surprised at how well this works. So Dr. Doolittle and Wiley Coyote actually would have been able to move themselves by blowing into their own sails. But was this the best thing they could have done to get themselves moving? Now I did have quite a few questions in the comments section asking if the cart's headed downwind, what would be their best arrangement for the sail and the motor to get it to the highest speed? I even had somebody send me a data table with suggested changes, so I thought I'd try these out. Just the downwind from the fan. This is downwind plus the fan blowing into the sail. Headed downwind with the fan blowing backwards. And this is just the fan on the cart. So let's take a look at the results. I did each trial six times, found the average time, and then calculated the average speed. The fastest time was when the cart was headed downwind and the little fan was aimed backwards. 
and the slowest time was when the fan was off and the little fan was blowing into the sail. So according to the results, they would have done much better if they had blown backwards rather than forwards. Now I also had quite a few questions about the behavior of the boat in the pond. To answer those, I have to build my pond again. There we go. Now in the previous video I had somebody wondering in the comment section whether their fan cart would behave the same way as the homemade one that I did. So since I had this one that I borrowed from the high school physics room, I thought maybe we'd give this a try and see what happens. Hopefully we won't get it wet here. Alright, turn it on. Wow, that works pretty well. There's Newton's third law in action. Now let me adjust this here. Now let's try it once more, this time with the sail in place. Let's see what happens here. On. Let it go. Once again, it just seems to spin. I adjusted it all. Is that well? That's not going to make any difference. We see pretty much the same behavior as mine. Now, in the last video, I had quite a few questions about the spinning of the prop and the torque of the motor. Does it have anything to do with this turning of the boat? Well, I thought we could try that by removing the propeller and replacing it with just a solid bar. It doesn't look like it has much effect. But we see quite a difference when I put the prop and the sail back on. I think it's safe to say that the spin is actually due to unequal amounts of air being deflected off to the sides. It doesn't take much of a difference. No matter how I adjusted it, I couldn't get the boat to stop spinning in one direction or the other. Now once again, it's just turning. I have a rudder for it. Let me see if that would help. Hey, we got it going forward. Well, a little bit. Hey, the rudder made a difference. We actually have it going forward. Now let's try it with this sail. With the shaped sail, not only is the boat going forward, but it looks like it's going fairly straight. Now I have one more test I want to try and once again this was suggested by somebody from my last video. It's a paper cylinder that's just slightly larger than the fan blade and it's sealed at the one end. Turn it on here and release it and we see nothing happen. It's actually acting as a reverse thrust on a jet engine. 
I can feel the air coming this way towards me. Well, I had a few surprises today, but let me get this mess cleaned up. I have a few more tests that I want to try. All right, now that that mess is cleaned up, let's see if we can make another one. <laughs> Sorry, this is part of my safety equipment for this next part, along with a very strong exhaust vent right above me. What I want to do is produce a little bit of smoke or drop some powder into the moving air to see what kind of air flow we get as the air strikes the surface of this sail. So let's see what happens. In this first attempt, we can simply see the smoke being drawn through the fan as it pushes air forward. Now let's put the flat sail on. With the flat sail in place, we can see that the air is simply diverted off to the sides. Now here's where the airflow really gets complicated. Now this is just the fan cart's fan blowing into its own sail. Now the air movement starts when the fan is turned on and it pushes air forward. The reduced pressure behind the fan in turn draws more air into it. The next step is when the air hits that sail, it's redirected backwards. But not all of it continues backwards, some of it's redirected back into the fan a second time. It looks like we have even additional air movement towards the sail without going directly through the fan. It appears that I get the same behavior coming out the top and bottom of the sail as I get coming off of the sides. Well, I hope I answered a few questions about the blow in the sail problem, but it certainly raised some questions in my mind about how a sail actually works. So I will be visiting this again later. Alright, I'd like to thank you for stopping by. See you again.